I have all the evidence and my STBXW still has the audacity to deny everything. Part 2. Hi everyone, welcome back to another Reddit cheating story. Before we start, please hit the subscribe button and click the notification bell so you won't miss another cheating story goes live. But at the same time, I feel like this is all too weak as evidence for a divorce. Our accounts are separated, logistic reasons, too long to explain, so it's not that simple. The car is in her name. I can't just threaten a divorce, or discuss it with her, because I'm afraid she'll move the money and I'll have to start from scratch. And ultimately I'm heartbroken because, damn, I love her so much. She is the love of my life, my soulmate. But I also feel like the person I love isn't there anymore. And all it took was a couple of days. I really don't know what to do next. What if I'm wrong? Update 1, she's now being very flirtatious with me over text. She hasn't been like this in weeks. She's also been working from home since she joined the company in January, so she's only met her co-workers maybe a dozen times in person. There's no new apps purchased on the app store that I can see, but something occurred to me, they both use Slack for work, which is much more convenient, and hideable, than starting to use a separate app. She called me again. She is back at the first location, staying at the hotel. Worked from the office all day. One of the first things she told me was her arm was bruised and she might have bruised it at the other location, but doesn't really know how. I couldn't see it on camera because it was too dark. She then said I'm all bruised up, well not all bruised up, just this bruise. Weird. Update 2, I found the smoking gun. While I was preparing to wrap up on her laptop, my wife sends a message to Kay. It starts with just work stuff, but somehow it sounded flirty, and it could be deniable at the same time. I wait. I knew it was not going to remain just work because we had a call minutes prior and said goodnight and this was all too convenient. And then she initiates it. Wife, where's your book? K, is it there? Wife, maybe. K, you can deliver it in my room. Wife, bad idea. K, I said you can. K, I didn't know how good the idea was. K, the book is here already. Wife, glad you've got it already. K, unless you want to give me another book. Wife, although I think your gum is still here. Wife, I only have mine and I need to read it first. K, yeah, it is. K, maybe I need some gum now. Wife, only if you're going to sleep and not cause any trouble. K, I'm going to sleep for sure. Wife, go get your gum. K, open the door. I'm fucking devastated. I know y'all warned me, but fuck. I didn't even have to wait. Update 3, I got a lawyer, he instructed me on what to say. She wrote to me this morning, I had to delay my replies a bit as I was preparing my message. I think she sensed something was wrong given my non-replying, I could still be asleep at that time though, because she changed her Instagram password and removed the WhatsApp link. I've sent her a message and email saying everything should be taken up with my lawyers. I've gone no contact. Kay tried to call me. I've blocked him. She's calling my friends saying she doesn't know what prompted this, and a couple of her friends have asked me for more info. My lawyer advised me not to tell her the details, or anyone else until she goes talk to him. She's seeking compassion from everyone, and pretending she's clueless. She's mentioning in every single email she won't be here tomorrow slash this will kill her slash she will die if I don't let her in tonight. Obviously that's the last thing I can do. But I'm concerned about her thoughts. She's mentioned in another email I haven't betrayed you but I have been unfair and dishonest. Trickle truth? Also, this makes it a bit clearer that someone might have seen Kay go into her room. She might think that's all I know. I just had the hardest hour of my life. She supposedly had no battery on her phone. Was emailing me with her percentage at every point. With slight suicide remarks. Had to call the cops to check on her. Got to communicate with her friend, she booked her a hotel and Uber. She always says that she'll only talk face to face. Last thing she said was she'll tell the truth to her family so I don't have to. But I still don't know what it is. She made it to the hotel. She's now saying that everything I want slash need to know is in the notes app on her computer. I'm seriously considering if this is not all part of the game. But seriously. What the fuck? Update 4, she finally sent me an email with her version of facts. Let me preface this by saying that her friend called her and asked if there had been any messages with Kay, because I seemed too sure, and my wife said no. Now, for the fun facts, 
and this is why you don't say what you know. There was one other instance with a guy Friday night where they danced, hugged, got really close, and he wanted to kiss her, but she says she said no, that she couldn't, and that she was married. Preface this saying no kissing or sex happened. Says she didn't look at Kay in this light previously, including the night when we all went out. She admits to having fallen asleep on his shoulder. Not only on the plane, but also on the bus. I know she didn't initially sit with him, so she sought him out. However, she says we chose to sit next to each other on the bus, essentially shifting the blame to both and not just her. She admits to him having come to her room three, but she says didn't hear him, and her roommate let him in. And then she woke up, felt him hug her, she told him to stop, her roommate turned on the lights and asked him to leave. She's at the very least lying about the sequence of events and who initiated the contact. She admitted about Kay coming to her room asking for his book. He asked his colleagues if anyone had space for his book, earlier in the day, and she said yes. She says he went there after she messaged him saying she had his book, which we know is a lie, the book was with him, or, perhaps, this is yet another night but she absolutely did not message him about the book at any other point. He lingered at the door, they hugged for way too long, and she'd pull away, and he'd pull her back in and she gave into it. Apart from the hugging, nothing else happened. She admitted about yet another night where he stayed longer, I'm assuming the night she texted him about the book and gum, given the sequence of events. He came and sat on the bed this time. They talked. Hugged again. Nothing happened after that. She knew he wanted something to happen and maybe she did too. He left after half an hour. He kissed her neck once when they hugged, but it's not the red mark because this was a different time and left no marks, and the red mark was truly from her scarf. She used his phone to call me, and he knows what's happening. She says these are the lines she's crossed in our entire relationship. She sees a pattern forming, that it is due to stress, and she needs to get help to learn to handle the stress. She hurt herself emotionally to handle stress. She says she deleted messages she sent to him to avoid raising suspicions, and that the only inappropriate one was him saying open the door, after she sent him a message asking where his book was, insinuating that she wanted him to come over. She changed her Instagram password because she was afraid that the other guy she met on Friday would message her something she couldn't easily explain. She says she didn't kiss or fuck or anything similar anyone at any point. But she engaged in flirting and it went too far. She says she needs help, and compassion, she can't afford a hotel for a week, I know damn well she can afford a hotel for months. She says I might not believe she deserves it, but that she needs it right now. Y'all, I knew last night hadn't been the hardest it would get. She sent me a screen cap of the convo she had with Kay. Wife, he says he is proof we are sleeping together. Which doesn't exist because we're not so I don't know what the fuck happened. Kay, whatever proof he might have, it's not true. I honestly don't where he got that proof, but as we know, that never happened. Wife, I don't think the truth matters anymore. But I do think someone gave him a reason to suspect something. K, OFC the truth matters. What proof would he have if nothing happened? Wife, no idea. Something that gave him the idea that something happened. I told him everything that happened but he doesn't believe me. Wife, I'm sorry you're involved in this. Just wanted to give you a heads up in case it comes your way. K, fuck, but nothing happened. I don't know how he would not believe you. I'm sorry that you're passing through this. She thinks I told her friend I had proof they fucked, and of course, how could anyone prove that, unless he told someone or someone eavesdropped. And she's made it clear that she makes a clear separation between fucking slash kissing and everything else she did. Like fucking slash kissing would warrant all of this, but not really her dishonesty. I love how both are talking about how nothing happened. Like, really? Anyway, it got bad. She sent me a video saying her name and her ID, and that she was transferring ownership of the car to me. I could see some stuff in the background but nothing that allowed me to identify where she was. I couldn't think. I've seen way too much TV to know people do this when they're actually preparing for suicide. There are more to come. Find out the update of this story, check our channel or the description. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notification bell for any future cheating stories.